What is that? <laughs> All right, baby. Well, it's lost it. Happy yeah, Easter. Got beer here. Yeah, I get one. <laughs> he thought of a thing. Joey B's keeping us safe and high. <laughs> There's not a single day on the calendar that we can't stop in honor. Pride. <laughs> Anyways, hey buddy. Hey, what's going on, man? It's been a while. Alexa, honey, kill it. God bless you, baby. Alexa, end it. I hit my beer oh, here somewhere. I'll get it for you. Alexa, turn it's it off. Not, it's going to help side to find. Um, here it is. I got sure a shirt it. here, uh, buddy. Uh, Long-time listener, uh, you might know him as uh, on the Labatt's Blue commercials. As the one with the beard, he's on the uh, right of the face-off on the screen. Shawnee Shannerman uh, played for me. We're not going to overtime, are we? Yeah, great kid. He dropped off his jersey. He signed it. Sean, that means a lot to me, buddy. And um, it's not going to be here in the garage. It's going in the basement with the other signed jerseys I got. But um, Shawnee, I, I got to tell you. It means a lot, buddy. It means a lot to him. It means nothing to me. Actually, I was going to tear off the bottom and use his toilet paper. But listen, no, we love you, Shawnee. A uh, couple quick things. Um, on a sad note, uh, a, a cousin, my wife's cousin, passed away suddenly just before Easter and uh, just goes to show you life's too short. Yeah. And I know Jake uh, and Sweeney listens to our show. Jake would be Jake's uncle. Uh, thoughts and prayers. And um, we got a special person, I guess, in heaven now to watch down on us, right? Yeah, you know, and, and, and we, we've said this before, and everybody, I hope people live by this. You have, tomorrow's not given. Um, I have a very good friend of mine, and I was at his son's uh, funeral last Saturday, and he, his son was 35 years old. Uh, he died yeah, of a respiratory uh, virus. I mean, things you could never think would happen. No, it's a sin. It's a sin. And on the positive side, mm -hmm. you became a grandpa. Yeah, thanks, man. Congratulations. Congratulations to Zach and Amanda with baby Owen. Baby Owen, man. Um, there are some real special uh, magical times in one's life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, growing up, school, playing, having fun, sports, all that. Then you meet that great girl, you get married, you have a kid, special moments, right? You can't... Um, can't replace There's those, nothing man. like that. And then those kids grow up and all the time with them and guys, it goes by too quick. Mm -hmm. But then their achievement says they're growing up, you know, and um, all the different things they do. Um, and then they meet the special person. Yep. And and then you have the grandchild. And I know I'm skipping and jumping, but um, a lot of you guys out there know that. Uh, Timmy, your daughters just Timmy. You know, do outstanding with their dancing and their careers. And they, they were just over in... Well, uh, Timmy, in Edinburgh, Scotland with awesome. uh, Selena and the two daughters uh, are Bree... And uh, Ashlyn. Big watchers of the show. Big watchers of the show. They went over there to watch them live. Ashlyn, 20th in the world in the no. Irish dancing competition. And no slight to Brie. Brie was over there competing as well. I don't know where she finished, but it doesn't matter. Uh, great competition. And you know, guys, when now some of our kids are starting to have kids, I'm, I'm got a third one coming, grandchild. Yeah, he beat me. There's nothing like that. But it makes all the other things that happen in life so secondary. Yep. You know, like sports, for example. We we kind of get upset with our teams and stuff. But the truth is, family, those little ones looking. My little grandson comes out here Easter Sunday and gives me a hug. I mean, yeah. how can you get upset over the other stuff, right? The other stuff's entertainment, and you want to do good. But bottom line is there's way more special stuff and more important stuff going on. Yeah, and I, my little guy, Owen, was born eight days ago, and... Uh, man, it's hard to say if I've ever loved anything that much. And of no, course I did, my, my children and my right. wife. But it's just amazing. It and, is amazing. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. They, they, um, you're right, Tom. We, we have to step back and think of this. I thought about it last Saturday as my, my buddy was there and buried a 35-year-old son. It, this stuff is insane. And we have, to, we have to take life as it comes and have a good time. No, you're right. And, um, you know, there's nothing like it. We're proud of our, our children for everything they do. Absolutely. And um, that's what's most important in life. Families that stay together and pray together. The families that pray together <clears throat> stay together, guys. Um, it's important, man. Uh, news and notes. Well, the, the big news, um, obviously, is um, 
the Stefan Diggs trade. Yep. And I got a funny take on it. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna let him give his take. But I, last night I was on with you on a Facebook Live. <laughs> wasn't really a straight from the hip show, but about nine minutes of my thoughts. So I'm gonna let Tommy. I'll bounce off his stuff, but it, it, he needs to tell you what he thinks. Stefan Diggs came here and uh, for four years. They put in their offense, and they were fun, and they set records, and we won divisions. And we made the Bills great again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay? And as he stayed here, we obviously had some maybe sideline things and some mystic tweets and such. Mm -hmm. And um, then the, the media started coming out and saying that, you know, maybe he was covered and he wasn't happy and this and that. False news, maybe? Fake news. Fake news. And now he's moving on. To another team. Do you see the correlation? Yeah, I do. I mean, now we're, you know, now we're doomed here, so we need a replacement. Now, the truth of the matter is, <laughs> um, I think the Bills did a little self-examination. The cap has caught up to us like it does most good teams with the rookie quarter, uh, quarterbacks yeah. off the rookie deal. Bills did a little self-evaluation. We were kind of predictable. Steph was phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, he, he was phenomenal. But we can't take that away from him. No, Absolutely and not. we didn't win... With stuff like uh, my neighbors are saying Mitch Morris and Trevor Davis White and Jordan Poyer. Yeah, it, it, it all sucks, but we didn't win with those guys. No, we didn't. Right? Remember how we felt when Bruce and Andre and Thurman left? Yeah. And, but that team went to four straight Super Bowls. They won. Yes, they didn't win the big one. But this team hasn't even gotten to a Super Bowl. So the Bills did some uh, self, I think, yeah, examination. They, they refreshed a little bit. And good stuff. Good for you, buddy. I, I hope him the best. And let's see what Brandon Bean and um, and company can do here to uh, fill the missing uh, the missing cleats. Yeah. Well, to reiterate what I said yesterday is uh, I have all the faith in the world in Brandon Bean. Um, he didn't do this in a vacuum. Um, and that doesn't mean we're going to go out and get the best thing that ever lived. But I just think he's going to find the right guy to come in here to play with Josh Allen, to play with Shakir, to play with uh, Samuel, and, of course, you know, they got Dalton Kincaid and Knox. We, we got players. So, Shorter. Don't, don't underestimate Shorter after a year. So, the bottom line is I trust this guy so much that after the shock of it came in and we all understood kind of why it happened, um, I, I have full faith in him. He'll get us back there. Take, take the cap hit now. Yep, and, and that's the uh, other thing. No cap hit next year for him. I think, well, why would Houston want him? Well, Houston has two young stud receivers. Yeah. And Steph can kind of come in and he doesn't have to be the the D guy, and I think he will be a big help to them. We don't have those two guys right now, and uh, it could be a win win for everybody, right? I think so. I we were too defensible. We were defensible, um, and and I think he lost the step, right? Uh, I think he became more guardable as as receivers do at thirty and thirty one. I mean, he's not a slob. I mean, it, it just that happens. And so we, we did a little bit of a refresh. Now, a lot of it was was uh, because of the cap. But I think we also looked at ourselves. It's a great point, a kind of self-evaluation. By the way, I, I have way too many guys I know that I worked with that self-evaluate way too much. Yeah. But anyway. That's not exactly evaluate, but I know what you mean. <laughs> but anyway, no. Uh, I think I took a look. Fancy. <laughs> took a look and said, uh, okay, like Tom said, we didn't win it. We haven't won it. Uh, we're, we're coming up even shorter and shorter. We were in the AFC Championship game a few years back, and now it's been divisional round. So th they took a look at it. And, and, you know, this is a quote everybody uses, but I totally 100% agree. As long as you have Josh Allen, we're in the picture. We have our, our quarterback, and guys want to play for him. And is he part to blame for some of the failure? Yes. Yeah, we could. No doubt about it. He's but, made mistakes, absolutely. And there will be a day in five or six years mm -hmm. where they'll probably move on from Josh, right? Sure. You, you can't keep sweeping these contracts under the rug. And what are they doing over there? Brandon Bean has told us sustainability. Yeah. We come back next year with some cap room. Well, are we go out and get a big whale. No, but just see what they do. You got to draft good. Another comment from our, I'm not even going to give him credit in that name of the station. Uh -huh. But, well, has Bean really drafted well? Yeah. Well, um, Zach Moss. He's one of the best backs in football, right? I mean, he it's just got... Where did he sign with? Um, Indianapolis. Well, no, but he just re They just him traded him. Yeah. I mean, not one of, I guess he could be considered one. He's a good back. I mean, he's up there. He's a good Singletary. back. Singletary. Our guys get taken. Bean drafts well, but guys, he's not drafted in the top 10. He's drafted in the bottom... Yeah, he's always a 28, 30. 29, 30. Those are tough positions to find, guys. 
It looks like he might have missed on Elam, but we're not positive yet. I, I guess I what? I don't know. I don't think so. But, but guess what? There's misses. I was reading back in a draft book from a couple years ago, going back a couple years, excuse me, and my God, you can't believe the misses by some of these teams at 9, 10, 11, 15. Oh, my God. We traded up for uh, Watkins. We gave up the ninth pick. What did Cleveland get with that? Oh. And we got Sammy Watkins, who was a really good receiver. I would have taken Khalil Mack personally, but we took Sammy Watkins, and um, really didn't have the QB. No, right that, that for was him at that it. move. Yeah, but whatever. But well, he was trying to do it for Fitz to make Fitz a star. But no, it was EJ, right? Was it Manuel? It was EJ. Oh, it was EJ. You're right. right. I'm sorry. You're right. And a quick comment on EJ, guys. Yeah. He was a he's a commentator now somewhere. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. It's not worth it. Was well, it the beer? well spoken. <laughs> Yes, you know, he is. He broke down the quarterbacks, and what? I, could we hire something like that around here? Yeah, well, I'd like to hire somebody that can figure this shit out on the Saber side, but we'll talk that later. That's another thing. Um, but the Bills, uh, you know, listen, I, I really mean this. I, I'm not. I believe in these guys. I really do. We're we're going to be a good football team. You know, I said this uh, last night on my uh, my Facebook thing. Um, that <laughs> move took the Houston Oilers. Oh, Houston Oilers. <laughs> Houston taps old. Houston Texans from twenty-two to one to win the Super Bowl to eighteen to one. Okay, nice move in the sh in the short term. The Bills went from twelve to one to thirteen to one, so basically not even a tick. Right. And the bottom line is we got a good football team here, and I believe, and I love the quotes yesterday by Brandon Bean saying, "Well, it's not kickoff yet. It's not September." Right. There's pros and cons to it, right? Yeah. Uh, Houston. Houston, no age. Will be playing a much harder schedule this year. They got a first place schedule now. Teams aren't going to take them lightly, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see what they do. They, they, it looks like they they're on the right road, right? Right. The Bills are playing one of the hardest schedules in football. Yeah. And draft at the end of the round, and we have the quarterback. When you get those quarterbacks with the big um, salaries, that hurts your roster the rest of the way. But it's, it it's put in there uh, to keep the level playing field, and of course the owners have to swim in. As much money as possible. Yeah, because you got it. But um, you know, it, it's we're in that realm now. So now we got to see what we have to do. We we draft and uh, by the way, they didn't sweep a ton of money under the rug for Josh. No, they didn't. They took about Smart half. Move. Of, they took only about half what they could have. And you know, the bottom line is, look 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 at Belichick and that 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 crap in New England. You know, that guy is a pain in the butt. I don't like him. But he knew when to turn the page on guys too. He would not give out these monster contracts. Right. Now. He could do that because he had the best quarterback that ever lived, and the guy just kept bringing him back. <laughs> well, you know what? We don't have the best that ever lived, but we got a God bless a good one, and right. we're going to be fine. You know, and it, it, we line him up and play and see what happens, and uh, no ill feelings towards Steph. Uh, I G wish him well, except I don't want him to win like right. the, the, the conference. That's G all. GR um, uh, started the rumor that it was bad tweets. That, that came from the radio station, guys. Not the Bills. Did it add to growing weary? Yes, I think it did. Maybe it did. And we also, because of our beat reporters here <laughs> for both teams, Matty Glad made the comment and got in trouble with a hot mic, remember? Yes. You can't just go ask Steph because that's Steph being Steph. Yeah. All right, little things have been going on. Doesn't <clears throat> make the guy a bad guy, but he's a diva. He's a diva. And I don't think those kind of guys are ever happy. No, I don't think so. And he'll be happy if he wins the Super Bowl. I was telling you before, if he ever wins the Super Bowl, he'll be happy, and the next year he'll be bitching in training camp. That's the kind of guy he is. And I remember the, the, the tweets from his brother. Dude, got to get out of Dare. Dare. <laughs> what, why? Yeah, why? So, Where's dude going? And where did you go? You're with the Cowboys. You haven't, made, you haven't done shit there. I, I just didn't understand what was wrong with here. But, hey, we move on now. Yeah. I got all the trust in the world in, in the GM and the coach there with the Bills. Yep. And, uh, Me too. We, we move on, and uh, life goes on. And like I said, we didn't win with him. And really, mm -hmm. we, we just want to win one. Just one. And uh, as long as we have Josh, I think we have a chance. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there and see what happens, right? Yeah, Josh is uh, he's only 28. Some comments that Joe Brady's uh, isn't isn't able. Well, one guy tweeted out, "Joe Brady isn't able to game plan a guy open." At. Right, right. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, the Bills seem to move the ball pretty good with Dorsey, and was that all his fault? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But um, and, and maybe maybe we do emphasize running just a little bit more. I know BetQL and everybody has a heart attack with that, but I don't. As long as we win. 
I don't care how the rock <clears throat> Remember gets the in the end zone. What was the game last year that we ran almost every freaking time? We blew them out. Was it Dallas? It was, it was, uh, it was Dallas. They couldn't stop us. I think it was Dallas, yes. We ran and ran and ran. And you know, at the end of the day, I had a big smile on my face and I could care we less. We won. <laughs> and you know, I don't know what they're doing with Spencer Brown. Oh, God. Well, he was hurt. He's been nursing something. He didn't have a full camp. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Now today, what we really have is pretty solid at right tackle. Isn't that a funny time? I remember you last <laughs> preseason telling you, Telling me and the and the viewers that uh, don't worry about Spencer Brown. He was hurt. He's a great player. Boy, did he come on! He, he just You're right. injuries and athleticism and stuff. It all came out. But um, now we need some new leadership to step up. Or we lost some leadership, mm -hmm. big time leaders. Yep. But now we need some new guys to step up. Deion Dawkins and um, I don't know. Yeah, fill in the blank. Obviously, mm -hmm. Josh. Mm -hmm. And um, but don't uh, don't rule. Uh, Brandon Bean and, and the Bills out of this thing because uh, nope. uh, there's something up their sleeves. And um, even if we stay at 28. Right? Even if we stay at 28. This point. <clears throat> so I was just reading that some of the draft picks say there are 17 guys, wide receivers, that could be picked in the first and second round. I mean, that's a lot of the talent out there. Now, some are better than others. I get all that. But if you can't get up and you get to 28 and you can't get a Brian Thomas Jr. or whatever, Get get his uh, uh, get one of the guys get his the guy uh, his um, his teammate that ran the four two one. There's guys there. We'll, we'll figure it out. But I'll leave that to Bean and his scouts because you know what they're they're some of the best in the league. And there's also guys that I mean I'm not a huge college football fan, right? Mm -mm. But there's guys none of us have heard of. I no. I never heard of Shakir. Exactly. He's a good wide receiver. And he's a hell of wide receiver. So. Uh, there there's guys out there. The Bills have good scouts. They're out searching it. <clears throat> and the one thing. Everybody's quick to well, package all of this and get this guy. When you got cap issues and stuff, more draft picks that make your team with the controlled um, salaries the are important. And you still and even if it's for depth, you got to have depth. Right. And you get these guys, you know. And he has been for as much as people don't like his second or third round picks. For, I think it's second. They're playing elsewhere. They're playing elsewhere. Number one and number two. Look at his fifth, sixth, and seventh that play for us. That provide depth, <laughs> that start, that start in other teams, that go to other teams. And, and I will say, too, and I, I use this with hockey a lot, when you have a good, solid team, it's easier to bring a young guy in. Yes. Good habits. Mm -hmm. uh, you can cover a weakness talent-wise. Yep. And so I think that's kudos to the Bills being so good yep. that these guys come in and don't have to be day one domineros, right? Right. And uh, so kudos to all of that, too. So... But Dane Jackson, right? Seventh round pick out of Pitt. And the kid was forced into some stuff because of injuries. Now, he's gone now. Was he a superstar? No. But as a seventh rounder, man, he gave us some good snaps. Hate to lose him, but cap wise, <clears throat> what are you going to do, right? No, you had to, yeah. You know, but uh, they'll be fine there. And uh, I mean, Benford, what a find he was in sixth, sixth right. round. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, we do. We do have uh, a, a lot to look forward to. And I'm not concerned over Diggs. Do I think the Bills might take a step back? Well, as we sit here today, well, they might with, they, with the offense they have, but that's like Brandon Bean said. It's yeah. As you sit here and look at it today, yeah, you'd have to objectively say we, we just lost a lot of freaking yards with him and Gabe Davis. However, a lot of leadership. A lot of leadership. But however, um, it's it's April 4th, and uh, I'll say what he said. He'll find some. I'm telling you he's going to find somebody. Yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned at all. That's kind of the fun of the whole schmeal. It is. Uh, hockey? Hockey. Uh, the Sabres, I, I, I'm one of the biggest um, supporters of the Sabres in our little group. Mm -hmm. I think they're on the verge of being a really good team. Mm -hmm. is, it, uh, is, it, is it disappointing that we're, we're most likely not going to make the playoffs? Yeah, yeah. but um, I think I have trust in Kevin Adams. I do like Don Granato. Will they have to make a move? The way things are leaning toward the fans and stuff... The impatience, impatience of the fans, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, I, I kind of hope not. I'd kind of rather see them bring in a better assistant with them. Two assistants, yeah. You know, <laughs> and uh, well, you know, and uh, some of that's overblown, but maybe a little something more of a yin and a yang. Yeah, I think good guy, bad guy type thing. I think Granado's a, a really good teacher, and I blame him for one thing. And I'm probably more, I'm different than you on this. He comes into a first time coaching in the NHL for head coach. And although he's been with the U.S. development team and all that, and he grabs a guy from across the street 
at the Harbor Center who's teaching 10 year olds. I'm sorry, the whole Matt Ellis and the Slob defense guy. You know what? I know one thing, and I didn't. I wasn't a coach, but as I, when as a manager, when I worked at the bank, you surround yourself with the best. You don't go and find first year guys that are teaching ten year olds. You don't do that. And I think he made a massive mistake on that. I really do, because I think he's a good coach. But I think that I think this team, at certain times, and this almost are pushing him out the door because there's so many people pissed off. Um, fans, it's now time to renew season tickets. A lot of them aren't. And I think at this point, uh, Donnie might have to go just for shit. But I like the way he talks. I like the way he teaches. But then they go out, he says things. They, they go over it on video. And they talk to him, and they show him, and they practice it. And then they come out and shit the bed in the first period at 5 nothing. You know, it is what it is. But There, there are frustrating things with that. There's no doubt about it. I think... Um, the, the biggest thing with the Sabres, I'm going to say it again, uh, losing Tage, Skins, and Jack Quinn for mm -hmm. large parts of the season hurt this team more than you know. Especially well, winter, because he was gone. Every team gets hurt, yes, but not every young team can sustain those types of injuries. We are extremely young, and when you lose, I'm telling you, Jack Quinn, he was going to probably have a year... What the Turkish had, 28 goals this game. It's a game, you've heard me say this a million times, it's a game of puzzles, right? Quinn allows the Sabres to keep Skinner with Tage and mm -hmm. Tuck. Cousins had huge chemistry with Paterk and, and, uh, and Quinn. Quinn. And then you, you put in Benson down mm -hmm. there with whatever, right? <coughs> and But we lost that. And that, and I think the loss of Quinn really has affected it's a, uh, it's uh, a big Cousins. One. I mean, he, Cousins is mad at himself. He's going, I got shots, I got chances, I can't score. Uh, I got to work on it in the off season. He's he's mad at himself, and I think the kid's a great player. He's just got to. He he started off too. He got hurt. He started off slow. Yep. Got hurt. Struggled with the the face. Got shield, punched in the face. All yep. of that. Um, we did not. Everybody have good goaltending to start. The oh my season. god. Oh my god. That was I remember game. some seven hundreds, seven ten, seven thirty six. Now now the the five goal start wasn't Uka's best. No, he, performance. No, he didn't play well. And I know all the defense. Okay, but you got to stop pucks in the league. Yeah, you got to stop. The and other he, night. And he's shown that, how good he's been. The other night, uh, Skinner night, mm -hmm. the first shot, th that can't beat you. No, it shouldn't beat Yet you. Yet I hear the local gendarme say, uh, again, not prepared. Not prepared for a shot that he should have stopped. Yeah, that, exactly right. So That wasn't a not prepared. That was the first thing I said. I got in the text chat. I said, that has to be stopped. I mean, it, it the, kills you. The other thing that our, our beat reporter has been saying about the uh, uh, Sabres is that his impression of the trade deadline interview with Adams. Adams had a 25-year-old top flight center uh, on, on a, an agreed-upon trade that would get, excuse me, give up futures, and he wouldn't waive his no-trade clause. I call bullshit. What, what team is trading a 25-year-old top flight center unless he's multiply concussed, <laughs> uh, with two broken legs, what? what? Or as a felon. Is he <laughs> is he on a playoff team? Playoff. Well, okay, I could see a guy saying, "No, I'd rather stick around and play in the playoffs." Mm -hmm. If he's if it's a if it's an Arizona, seriously, mm -hmm. Bowen Bo Byram jumped at the chance to come here. He did. I'm done with nobody wants to play here. Nobody wants to come here. Woe is me. Well, you know what? You guys can change that. You really think someone wants to live in that shithole, New Jersey? Come on, that's beautiful there. New York, <laughs> the friendly old shithole. You come out of Madison Square Garden, you're stepping in raw shit. And being shot Dope at. and crime. Now stop at. it. Why did Byram jump here? Uh, the kid from um, Ithaca just retired from the uh, Dustin Brown. Brown, from the, yeah. Moved here. Back so it's Cornell. not a bad place. This is a great place to watch hockey and win. But God damn it, you got to do something, right? Yeah. I go to a Bandits game. You can't hear yourself think. No, you we really just want to win. And let's go to this Leafs game for a minute. They come in here, and oh, they're rooting for the other team and all that. And, uh, Brian Koziel said, I looked at the Sabres bench, and they were just distraught. Frig that, all right? First off, when we put a ninth spot on them, they walked out here with their tails between their legs. They sure did. Nine Secondly, a lot of them are season ticket holders. They're fair weather, pe <clears throat> fair weather people. The same guy with Matthews wore... Um, you name it the other night. Yeah, it, it, Hirschma, from Boston. Or Luke Hughes. Yeah. You know, win, and that stops. 
if it's me and my buddies, I guess there was a bunch of guys behind the Sabres bench. They had a 60th balloon. Yeah. And they had... Um, Spelled out Matthews. Matthews, all right? That's me and my buddies playing? Or I want a team like this. Let's make their night miserable. Yeah. Right? Instead of woe is me. Now, again, that's the media saying woe is me. Right. Right? You don't want that to happen? Don't let it happen. But here's what I can't stomach. That game ended, and Bertuzzi, who's the biggest pussycat on skates... Wolf tickets all day. ...is going around looking for a dance partner, and nobody on the Sabres wanted to dance, and then he slaps Delene in the face. I won't support pussy. Pussy. Won't do it. Put a giant beaver on the jersey. I'm sorry. And I know the roster isn't made up with a tough guy. Okay. But someone could cut out there and drag him down, stick him in the groin, something. Something. I, I agree. We, all right. We we're talking about talk out there and Thompson was out there. Yeah, they're not fighters. But you know what? Tackle his ass and slam him on the ice a couple times till the refs get in there. I won't support that. And I think the Sabres in the offseason... This 25-year-old center, that we, screw that. That's bullshit. Nah. Nobody's giving up a 25-year-old center unless, he, like I said, multiple concussed and whatever. But it's probably some Russian call Paul the Hamilton Sabres, going, I, here's what's happening. I've heard. The Sabres need some men. They need The group we have is very talented. By the way, <clears throat> why do they play on special nights like for Skinner? Well, by the way, guys, we outskated the Leafs that night. We did. We outshot them 28 to 20. It, we just couldn't beat Samson off. Yeah, we couldn't beat him, but, but that didn't mean we didn't show up that game. I've watched many games this year, and when the Sabres play their style, they're very frustrating to play against. But teams will get a little cheap. Darlene missed games because of a cheap shot. Yeah. The second time Quinter got hurt That's right. was a cheap shot. Cheap shot. Um, con- uh, Skinner, mm-hmm. right? They take we liberties. need someone that says, not my team, not tonight. Perfect example against uh, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Hughes shoots the puck behind the net, hits um, Levi in the back of the head. Right. He was trying for one of his little lacrosse. Okay, Wahoo, it's great. No, not my team, Hughesy. Yeah. He gets pancake for that. <laughs> and, you know, then that's the way I want my team to play. Are there guys out in the league? I don't know their names. Mm-hmm. But I know Todd Patuzzi. He wouldn't fight anybody. He's And that Leafs team, they're talented. I don't see them going very far. No. What, do you want a team like that? Okay, but four guys, that balloon and mad M A T H whatever the hell they got sitting there. Four guys standing around, and let him score that goal. Knock him on his ass. Uh, that was that part infuriated me. I want a team that says, you know what, the fans aren't happy. I'm not happy. Right. And exactly right. I want I want to see somebody that's pissed off when they lose. Yeah, I agree. You know, and no, I don't need the Rangers seven foot bomb. I don't need him. No, I've been a big supporter of Byram, but Byram <laughs> lost his stick on that player. It broke. He had to, he had to throw it down, and then you, you watched Matthews go behind him and score a goal, and, the, and he stood and, there. And we can blame Marty Wolford and Granados too light. These guys have been playing hockey since they're five. Yeah, it is. All right, fun. you don't need the coach to say, "Bo, cover him." But Turka lost his stick, yeah. and he knocked. I think it was Tavares down. Knocked him right down. All right, there are things to do. And you want a captain? And I know this won't happen, but look at that little nine. Oh, my God. That little nine goes in the tough spots. He's knocked in the net and hit. And what did the guys on ESPN tell us? Well, you're not going to get that call at 18. (laughs) So there's penalties based on age? Based on age now, yes. Which means Sid the cock gets him uh, 74 times a game. So um, right away, a lot of people here, they're frustrated. I get it. But patience is a virtue, everybody. Now, fire Granado. Let's bring back Lindy Ruff. Uh, no. no. <laughs> Let's bring in Michael Pekka. No. no. Okay? How about making these guys play? Well, we, just, we don't know what they're doing. What's going on doing? Every Tuesday, he's on the radio. And he tells you exactly. And he tells you what he wants them to do, and I agree with him. That's you got to right. do it. And really, since January 1st, excuse me, they have. Yeah, they really They've have. played really good hockey. Why it took three months? Probably because they're young. I think Systems, injuries play the big. Injuries, I think young, but injuries was a big thing. Huh? Goaltending. Now we got two good goals. Well, now we can trade one of them. No. Well, why don't we just hold on to both of them for a little bit? <laughs> no, let's not trade anybody. All right. Um, but I won't stomach, and I don't know Kevin Adams. Never really had a talk with him. But I think that game against Toronto pissed him off too. Yeah, I think so. I don't like pussy. I. Well, you. I, not, I know Easter <laughs> Sunday was transgender. I mean, when you play <laughs> cowardly. 
Okay. By the way, that there's a hundred. That's the farthest from the truth. I understand. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> ladies. By the way, there's 166 days that are talk about transgender, uh, gay, LBGQ. And, and since we're on the subject of that, right? <laughs> When's the last time you gave a fuck if the guy next to you what his sexual preference was? You, you Can should. somebody tell me that? Excuse me, how are you doing? You look stable, yeah, you too. You, you, okay? Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Cold know, beer here? Who know. needs a beer? Transgender, get the fuck away from me. No, you seriously, who cares? You got a reader? Oh, okay. And half the year is dedicated to this stuff. How about just respect that? Yeah, Let's just, respect one another. Just how about that? It. How about that? We don't need these days upon days of... Oh, let's, 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 oh, yes. And this moron in Washington comes out on Easter Sunday and protects transgender, come out of the closet day. Listen, we know Barack married Tucker, right? (laughs) But, guys, I don't need it forced down my throat. Don't force this shit down my throat. That was Easter Sunday. Didn't he marry Mike? No, you know, the Easter egg hunt. Uh It takes place every year in Mike's shorts. Anyways, (laughs) um, done with that shit. But anyway, Sabres... I yeah. think they're on the right road. What we don't want to do is trade off and bring in Sid the Kid for nine pieces. No. This team's going to be good, but I will say, Terry Pagula, yeah. step in and demand a little more. Yeah, Step in, and if you want to upgrade, I would keep Don Granato, and I would improve his assistance a bit. Nothing against Matty Ellis, right? But I guess he didn't bring... He doesn't bring the um, maybe, maybe they need the experience. Fire. Maybe they need experience. And Whatever I, it is, it's not working. That's all. You know, and I don't personally hate the guy. No, it's not and, working. I, but I guess you can look. Things look confused <sighs> and stuff. But these guys all know how to run a power play, right? They've done it forever, mm-hmm. and I think it's overblown. With here's what you're doing. All it's, the players are. Let me tell you, they, they're they're to blame. That damn that perimeter horseshit. And if you, the other thing is, when there's three guys standing at the line, why are we stick handling past it? Dump, dump it and it. go. <clears throat> and um, I did mention this to a guy, and we, we brought it up on another show. They do have team psychiatrists. Maybe those couches should get a little more worn. <laughs> but use more. I think it's experience. I don't care if the fa- the players don't like the fact they're booed. Everybody's booed. Yeah. Everybody's booed. The president of the United States, for crying out loud, is booed. Rightfully Which, so. And rightfully so. But, um, but. Don't, you don't want to get booed, play. That's what you do when you get the big money, right? And don't tell me. You weren't booed as kids and stuff because we all know the travel business and the yeah. hatred there. Yeah. And it was easy when you, mom, and, mom and dad could just take you to a better team. You're on this team, make this team better. Harumph! And Adams needs to figure it out. I think, we, I think we're really close. I really do. Well, there's a lot of talent. We've all said that. I don't hate the Sabres. I love the Sabres. I live and die with them. But there's too much talent to go out there and just get bombarded. So... Play and like Tom said, when you play the way they can play, they're scary good. Now people will say, um, <clears throat> "Well, look at Toronto. They bring up this Robertson and they bring up Bobby McMahon, and they're doing great because it's a good team, yeah. and it's puzzle easier piece. to fit in those guys, right? Yeah, Bobby McMahon piece. can't come in and be a top six. No, we need <clears throat> our lower guys, Tyson Yost, Robinson, uh, Victor Disappearson. We <laughs> those guys have to be a little yeah. bit better too." And um, they, they, they're kind of dragging us down a bit. But yeah. Quinn was a big loss. And um, But let's get hungry now, guys. Let's get hungry. George got and the last six games. The roof will blow off. The, try a Bandits game, guys. You can't hear yourself think. No, you can't. So, yeah. anyways. Uh, be a spoiler. Let's kick Philly out. Make sure Pittsburgh doesn't go in. Just keep playing well. Keep improving. And... Uh, Maybe a little luck with the uh, spinning wheel, right? Probably got won't. to go around, but, but the new the new rules only can go up five, and we're ten right now. Right, okay, but you know but what? Five, I'll go. But here's five. a here's a nice part about this draft coming up. There's a it's heavily defense, and mm-hmm. we don't need that. That's right. Get me a four, uh, guys. One report uh, when I was sitting with Timmy Kennedy, he said I asked him, did Savoy make um, Casey Fitch, uh, make, um, Middlestead Middlestead expendable? He said no. Wahlberg and Noah. Oslin. Mm-hmm. Wahlberg just joined um, Rochester, and I guess he's... He had a great first game. I guess I didn't think he was on the scoreboard, but they were really impressed. He's a big guy, and they play with a little bit of sandpaper. Anton Wahlberg. We moved, he, they, they were stunned. At 37, he was still there, and I know that sounds... But I looked at when we did our draft show, <laughs> they had Wahlberg in the early 20s. When he was there at 37, the Sabres jumped. Right, and, and he Noah Oslin played in the World Juniors. They went pretty far. Did they win it? Um, I think they did. And he, he's got some grit. And they both guys, everybody, plays the 
game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like Quinn, like Kulik, <clears throat> they all played a 200 game. So they're not going to get bounced around. And they've got some playoff grit now. So from, no, I from think, Rochester. And I think Oslin was part of the um, uh, Reinhardt deal. Sammy Reinhardt. Right. So we got Oslin and we got Levi. I said, you know what? A couple quick, uh, just a shot here, something to think about. Okay. Reinhardt's going to be a free agent this year. Mm -hmm. Would you? Yeah, I would. I would. I mean, if he wasn't a cancer, I wasn't in that room. And, and right. You hear Paul know. Hamilton, and he's like, hey, wow. terrible. I wow. um, <clears throat> But anyways, jumping ahead to another thing I wanted to touch on, right? Go ahead, touch on. The other day, uh, Kansas City voted down its sales tax uh, to to improve Arrowhead Stadium. Correct. Now the rumors start. They might go and this and that. The NFL could care less about Kansas City, New York. They want Buffalo. Brazil, uh, the Rhine River. They want all that shit. But Ridiculous. our local radio guys said, well, at least Kansas City had a chance to vote. And vote on their state. We just had it built here. Well, great point, guys. But if we're going to do some voting... I feel there's, retorts coming here. There's a couple of things I'd like to vote on first. Things? You know, the no bond. <laughs> Billions of dollars a year now spent on cards for uh, our newfound illegals. Illegals. Uh, inmates getting money for jobs they do at work. Um, <laughs> let any crime go. Let them fly out of the town for whatever you want, for any reason. Let's just give them a, an escort back to uh, Sanctuary. Uh, Sanctuary City. Let them all come in over the border. Uh, what else can we throw on there? <laughs> Natural gas, we got to get rid of it and go to electric. Electric. Except we have gas. There's Kathy Oakle um, <laughs> doing her um, cooking on a grill, right? Fire grill. And bring your aborted feces to New York and we'll abort you for you and we'll pay for it. We'll pay for it. Don't want that wiener? Come to New York City, friends. No, there's a lot of things I like to vote on first. Yeah. Then a stadium, when we build palaces at the other end of this shithole. How many palaces in that fuck dump? I'm telling you something. You're damn right it was our time. You're damn right it was our time and our turn up here. And as far as the rest of it, you're absolutely right. This 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 country scares the shit out of me. I wrote something today. I was so pissed off. I mean, all right. People don't care about my views politically and everything. Forget politics for a minute. In what world... Does people coming into my home to stay in my home while I'm away, and when I come back, it's not my home. They have more rights than I do. In what world, in what fantasy cartoon is that real? Well, I'll tell you where. New York and all the blue states. That is the law. They have more rights than I do as an owner. That's insane. And you can laugh about Florida and DeSantis. He made it immediately with a swipe of a pen. Squatters, you're gone. You don't want to go, you're shot. Get the fuck out. They take advantage of rules that were put in at the time for probably a good reason. Yeah. Right? Landlords just throwing people out. <clears throat> we had a big guy here, I won't name his name, that would throw tenants out if they were 30 days late. Yeah. So there are rules for certain things, right? But we had these Venezuelan gangs living in New York. Yep. And they ran into the house, they had guns, they had a baby laying in shit, uh, they had dope, all this stuff. And they, the, the neighbor said, I don't know why this has been going on, this is, there are motorcycles all night long, all this traffic. Maybe you should pay attention on the voting day, Yeah. Nyak. Yeah, because he's, uh, he's putting in the Democrats and that's what's happening. So if before we vote on whether we build this stadium, there's a lot of other things I'd like to vote on first, okay? Yeah. But... Um, other than that, um, did you like our segue from the uh, Sabres right into uh, politics? I know that you did. <laughs> I know that y'all did. Seriously, you got to pay attention. But um, there are some things that like make me angry. Get a scanner. Get a scanner. Yeah, because you're, you're not going to hear it. On, you won't hear it with thunder thighs, Claudine Ewing on 247. Sneaky Joe DeBasso says, <laughs> see my buddies over at Clinton Collision. Those Kias that are being stolen, they'll be glad to fix it up for you. Well, how about we catch some of these guys instead of sending them home to Grandmama <laughs> and making them pay for the damage? You know what this is costing us all, this damage? And it's us all because of insurance rates. And we don't chase, we don't chase anybody anymore because someone could get hurt. Guy got T-Mo the other night. He's in ECMC right now. And guess what? Nobody was chasing him. No. They're going to T-Mo people anyway because they're getting out of, getting out of Dodge to the Sanctuary city, city at 100 miles an hour anyway. So let's start doing some roadblocks. Let's get these cops involved because the cops... 
Some of them want to stop these guys. And the ones that do are saying to themselves, but why do I bother? Because they're going to slap on the wrist at 2 a.m. in front of some magistrate who got out of bed. Our Chickawaga police are giving out. punks from the mall rides home. That's rides happening. home. Exactly. All right. Only you can prevent, can prevent social Satanism. <laughs> Only you. Only you, you know? can prevent the 13 bus. Hey, listen, I want life <laughs> better for my grandkids. They want to take, could you imagine taking Owen away because he doesn't want the, the wiener anymore? <laughs> this is happening. And the other day, I'll end on this, Howard Stern, the a wiener. guy threw a cat out of a third floor apartment building. That's horrible. That's, that's Stern went bonkers. Went bonkers about that but could care less about abortion. To abort right at nine months because, ah, eh, it's got a wiener, I wanted a clam. And by the way, if you guys got cable stuff, me TV every Sunday did the Archie Bunker Marathons. Oh, I love it. But each commercial break is loaded with the same commercial. Dogs are dying. Chains <laughs> 10 times their weight, holding them down. Well, wouldn't the chain fall off? <laughs> but no, it's horrible. But no once do you see, hi, in New York, they took their baby in because it was a girl and aborted it. There's none of that. No. Satan. Satan is rampant. Alive. It's rampant. And only you can Never stop it. Satan. All right, guys. It's been a couple weeks, so good talking to you. Hope you enjoyed the show. Shawnee, thank you, buddy. Sean, God bless you. And just do something else for a living. You're not a good actor. You know? No, actually, you did a great way, job. Core's not Bud Light. Oh, we're not woke. <laughs> woke is broke. Woke is a joke. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Great being back. I am a true American. I sang my heart off for those kids I did. Uh, I sang my heart out, bloody hell. Ah. Uh.